Hey everyone, welcome back to Threading It Together. Lori and Tracy here, still talking about uh, end of year fundraising. Still? Wait, what? Still. It's one of those topics that goes on and on and on. Yes, it does. Like the song that never ends. Um, oh no. So, Why'd you do that? Now I'm going to be thinking of that song. So that is how end of year fundraising <laughs> feels sometimes. It does. It, you're right. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. But um, <clears throat> there's so much to talk about. Yeah. That's what it means. So today we're going to just focus on one piece of it. We're going to talk about the male piece. Yes. Should you still be doing something in the mail for your end of year uh, appeal? You know, to, to mail or not to mail, that is the question. <laughs> and let's start where we all, where Tracy always likes That's to right. start, is the with data. the data. I start the data. Uh, it's really what, is the da what does the data tell us? Should we mail? <laughs> yes. The data uh, says you need yeah. to put something in the mail. Now we can talk about what that might be um, a little bit later on in our fun video, but um, right now what the data shows is only about 12% of giving is coming in online. And that might seem low, and actually it does seem a little low now that we are all living our lives online through all of our devices, multi-channel, like we're out there, you know, I think my mom used a QR code the other week and I'm like, what? You can't eat at a restaurant <laughs> if you don't know how to. Exactly. So, so um, we do anticipate that that number will go up. But what that says is 88% of giving is still coming by check to organizations all across this country. So it's important that if those donations are coming in by check, it means that people are receiving mail at their homes and places of business um, and that they are probably making decisions based on writing that check. Um, and so something very tangible that they can see and read and touch is gonna to be really important. Yeah, and you know, the data. <laughs> yeah, you're getting in. Getting it. See? The data I'm is gonna actually everyone <laughs> really <laughs> telling us that multi-channel <laughs> communication is converting the highest. And uh, if you think about what Tracy just said, yes, we are all living our lives a lot online, more and more mm -hmm. all the time, especially after the pandemic. And you know, we're also getting overwhelmed online. And so, while you um, absolutely are, are reaching donors through email and social media, it might be the piece that comes in the mail that actually stands out to them because there's a lot going on online and, and all the different channels are really reinforcing each other. Yeah. So the mail is a, is a piece of that that absolutely still works. And so we want to encourage you to think about which way you might want to use that element yeah. in the way that you plan your, um, your campaign. Yep. So let's, Tracy, let's talk about who. So let's say okay. everyone's on board with us. They understand they're going to send something in the mail. Yeah. Who should they mail to? Well, um, it depends on a couple things. First of all, how much money can you spend? That's true. Mail costs money. <laughs> so uh, how much capacity do you have to execute um, a direct mail campaign? And when I say direct mail, I'm, what I'm talking about is something that you've printed and put in the mail with a stamp or some sort of postage. Because it, it, I think a lot of times people think, a direct mail house, like with like you buy a list. Yeah. I, I'm talking, labels in the mail. We're not, we are definitely not very, talking about like mail labels. something to somebody. That is what we're talking about when I say direct mail. So it really depends on your capacity, how much you can spend, uh, what is the timeline, right? You know, if you if you wait, you know, you know, where are you in the year when it comes mm -hmm. to planning end of year? You might, right now we're in the early fall, so we're hoping that you're making those plans now. But if you come across this video a little bit closer to the end of the year, you got to be reasonable. Um, I also think it kind of depends whose address you yeah, have, right? That's something that's so important. I was just thinking, um, a colleague of ours reminded us, you know, it's important now that we we're coming out of the pandemic to really recognize that the pandemic, the pandemic shifted just about everything, including where people are working, uh, even where they're living. So you might have some, that the amount of people that you can mail something to might have changed drastically. Um, and or you might, and probably you have some work to do in your data to clean that up, to find people. Um, and that might take a little bit, a few more steps before you know their right address. Yeah, so uh, we would say, look, pick some segment yeah. that you feel you've got strong data for that you know this letter or postcard or whatever you're gonna send actually will make it to them. Yep. Um, because you know that there's some recency to the address and um, and try to reinforce your messaging that you're sending through your digital channels through the mail. Um, it might be, again, maybe you're picking donors who have given higher gifts in the past so that you're not sending uh, you know, 
55 cents plus the printing to everyone who's giving you five dollars maybe you're making a 250 dollars and above cutoff mm -hmm. or people who are geographically close to your organization if you are a geographic based organization because maybe they feel like ones that have um, been more engaged with you. There's lots of ways you can think about it. We have a whole video on segmenting yeah. your donors. I think I was in that one. <laughs> I think you were because yeah. you know what? Data. It's a lot That's of a data. Lot about segmenting. <laughs> so, you know, this is another element of segmenting. Yeah. So, you know, the, the point is um, pick a list and that makes sense for you and your budget and try something in the mail. Um, I just something yeah. in mind. Also, because this, when you said the segmenting video, does it serve your goal? You know, are the are you looking at are you, is one of your goals to upgrade donors from one level to the other? If you can segment that list that you want to upgrade, then that's the message that you're writing. Last year you gave us a hundred dollars. We'd like to ask you to upgrade your gift to two hundred fifty dollars this year. Like what if if your goal? Think about what your goals are, and then use that segment to think about what you would send them in the mail. Yeah, so make sure it serves those purposes. And speaking of sending in the mail, obviously a letter. Mm -hmm. We like one page letters yes. to just get right to the point with your messaging it is probably the most common, but what are some of the other ways you can think about using mail to communicate and be creative? Um, postcards. Uh, I love a postcard or um, a thing. I've seen um, folks getting into stickers, like something fun, a one page with a sticker inside, a postcard, a thank you card, a holiday card. There's so much that goes on during those yeah. weeks of the end of the year. Um, with holidays and new beginnings and uh, gratitude that there's a lot of different ways in which you can reach out and touch someone in the mail and just and think about what would be creative also maybe what speaks to your mission um, and is that a drawing from a child that might mm -hmm. be in one of your programs or is it a, you know a beautiful postcard if you're a nature organization whatever it might be it just uh, think about what, how can you convey your values and your mission through whatever it is that you're sending. It doesn't always have to be a letter with lots of words. It could be something fun. Yeah, or both. <clears throat> exactly. Send a card and a letter. Pick a small segment. So much you can do. So much you can do. So, but the point we <laughs> want to make um, today is that you should be mm -hmm. including some sort of mailed element um, at the end of year. Uh, if that feels overwhelming to you, pick a, pick a group. Maybe it's a hundred things that are going in the mail, mm -hmm. you know, 100 people only, um, and just try that. And don't feel bogged down by the need that it has to be a very long letter yeah. and you know, all these things, all these words to write. <laughs> um, as we like a short letter, <laughs> yeah. one page, um, or a postcard or a holiday card. So um, hope you found this helpful. Absolutely. Like we mentioned, lots of crisscrossing topics in today's yeah. uh, clip that you can find more on in some of our other Running It Together videos on our end of year playlist. Um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to hear Tracy talk about data even more. That's where you can find us. More coming. You know you want more data. <laughs> like more cowbell. Yes. It's more yeah. data. I know you're going to get tired of me, but I'm going to make Never. everyone a data scientist Never. eventually. Never. More cowbell. <laughs> Um, uh, it, okay, if you'd like to reach out to talk about yes, data please do. or anything else um, fundraising related, you can find our information on threadstrategies.com. We invite you to be in touch anytime and thanks for joining us and best of luck uh, this year.